welcome to the latest edition of the Purple Surfer podcast with 360 Accountants. I'm Sophie Holmes. And I'm Andy Steele. And today we've got a few questions that we have been asked recently about how to maximise the value of business. Um, and we've seen quite a few clients asking this recently. Um, so how, how are businesses valued? There's lots of different ways of valuing a business, but I guess the most common way is by looking at the profits that the business has made historically and more recently, and also what profits are expected to be made in the foreseeable future. And then adjusting those profits for unusual items that may not occur post sale purchase. Typically things like um, adjusting directors' salaries to a market value, um, if there's excessive traveling motor costs, etc., in there under the current business owner, then that would be adjusted. So you, you get back to a, a, a profit figure that would be achieved going forwards by a new owner. And then they would multiply that by a multiple to get to the valuation of the business. Is it the same multiple every time or... Does so it, change? it changes depending on the sector, um, how many different people or organisations are interested in buying this business, the risk, um, but ultimately it's down to how quickly the purchaser wants a return on their investment. So if they paid a multiple of four times, for example, they would get their money back in four years. So they're getting a 25% return on their investment, which is probably the amount of return that you would be looking at getting on a on what is usually a fairly risky investment, i.e. an SME. Um, you know, a multiple of two, you'd be getting a 50% return, you'd get your money back in two years. A multiple higher, sort of six, seven, eight, it's taking longer to get your money back. So um, there's no hard and fast rule. Um, and and I guess that's where your, your sort of your advice from an accountant is crucial in determining what sort of multiple you would be looking at for your business. So when a business owner's looking to exit their business and come up with a valuation, it's probably a business they've helped grow from small beginnings. You know, they've probably got a lot of personal attachment to it. They're going to, I'm assuming, want the highest value that they can get. How how can they go about maximising that value? Yes, yeah, so um, for many entrepreneurs, sell, you, they, they will only sell a business once and they're often relying on the proceeds to fund their retirement. So achieving the maximum value possible is clearly really important. So how do you maximize the, the value of your business? Um, it's things like making sure the profits are as high as possible. So making sure that you're, you know, you, you're achieving the maximum margins possible. You're cutting out any excess expenditure making sure you're buying really efficiently. So the higher your, your net profit, the higher the value of the business will be. Um, so if you're a business that carries a lot of stock, trying to use up some old stock that you may be purchased a bit cheaper rather than having to buy at a higher rate, particularly now, yeah, would help. It would. Um, things like... Um, other things that will increase the value of your business are things like um, having really watertight T's and C's, um, having a reliable income stream. So you know if you if your customers are paying monthly by direct debit, it's quite difficult to get out of the their agreement with you um, quickly. You know they're sort of tied in for. A, a long period of time that reduces the risk to the purchaser of customers disappearing as soon as they buy the business so lower risk means higher value of, of the company 
We've talked in other podcasts as well about having robust accounting systems for various different topics, but I suppose that would help in this case as well, because if a buyer is wanting up-to-date management information, as a seller, you're able to prepare that quite quickly. Yeah, um, you know, the, the buyer will be doing financial due diligence, they'll be doing legal due diligence and all sorts of other checks as well but the main area they'll be looking at are the business's finances the accounting records and the more accurate reliable up-to-date they are um, the more likely the purchaser is to believe what they're telling them reducing the risk and therefore again increasing the the, the value of the business um, something else that's really important in getting your business ready for sale is for the business owner to be working in the business as little as possible so you know if, if the business owner is working 50 hours a week they're in charge of raising all the sales invoices winning new business managing the team buying um, quoting for new for new customers etc when they walk away there's quite a lot of risk there in that who's going to start looking after all of these um, you know, systems, processes, etc. Um, so that will affect the price because the purchaser will be worried that when the business owner walks away, because he or she has got such a big part in the business, um, you know, our profit's going to be affected. So a big part of getting the business ready for sale is sort of the business owner spending more time working on the business rather than in it and having a, a management team that are looking after the business so that when the business owner does walk away, it's as seamless as possible. Um, I mean, there's other reasons for doing that as well. You know, a, 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 the founder person in the business being involved as little as possible de-risks it. So if they are hit by a bus, um, the business continues to run as 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 it as much as possible as it was whilst the business business owner was still there, and um, it it means that their loved ones are still going to have a valuable asset to to sell. Um, so delegation is key. Yeah, de yeah, dele delegation um, and getting a good management team in place, depending on the size of the business, can take many many years sometimes decades so uh, the sooner the business owner starts thinking about their exit thinking about putting a management team in place the better really it's never too early to be thinking about your exit strategy so a business owner has built their business they potentially come into retirement they've had the business valued how do they go about finding a buyer there's lots of different ways really um there's business brokers out there so you know their their business model is identifying businesses that are ready for sale and then finding buyers for those businesses they have databases of um entrepreneurs that that want to buy businesses organizations that are looking for bolt-ons for their organizations etc so that's a a popular way of, of selling your business is engaging with a business broker. I'm assuming since COVID and everything, they've become very digital. There's quite a lot you can probably find online. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Um, also, you, you might want to discreetly or through a third party, such as your accountant or such as a business broker, you might want to contact... Um, suppliers customers competitors um entrepreneurs who are who you know have got cash and are looking to invest in businesses etc um or the team you know it's the team that knows the business knows the customers knows the suppliers you know, if you've got entrepreneurial managers within your business they may be interested in buying you out or if not 100%, then maybe a percentage. Mm -hmm. um, there's also things like employee ownership that you can look at nowadays, growth shares, etc. So there's all sorts of options. 
um, depending on whether or not you want a 100% exit or just a partial exit? So once a sale price has been agreed, you've gone through all the negotiations, all the due diligence, and you've worked out what what that sale price is going to be, how how is the tax paid? What tax would be calculable and due? So you, you'd, you'd basically have a capital gain, um, which is how much have you sold the business for? How much did it cost you to set up? Which would usually, if we're talking about a limited company, it's how much were the shares that you've got invested in this company? I mean, often it'll be a nominal a value, pound, yeah. 100 pounds. So you've got a gain. Um, and on the assumption you qualify for business asset disposal relief, um, which is a whole different topic, you would pay capital gains tax at 10% um, on the first million of the gain, and any gain over and above a million would be taxed at 20%. Um, you've got your annual exemption, so £3,000 of that would be tax-free, and that is dependent on um, the new government, if we do get a new government in July, not changing the capital gains tax rules, not scrapping or changing business asset disposal relief. And if it's a business that's husband and wife 50-50, the gain would be split 50-50, yeah. um, and then they would pay the necessary taxes separately. Yeah, so if the spouse also qualified for business asset disposal relief, you'd basically get two million at 10% with the balance being taxed at 20%. And two lots of capital gains exemption. Yeah. So one of the most common questions we've seen is, is it best to sell assets or the shares? And if, you know, what what does that mean? What's the, what's the best route to go down? Yeah, so on the assumption you're talking about the sale of a limited company, the first thing you need to establish is are we selling the shares or is the company selling the assets to the purchaser? But generally, the vendor would want to sell the shares because you, you usually, not always, but usually end up paying less tax if you go down that route. And also it's a much cleaner and quicker process because the alternative which is the company sells the assets, is that the money would go into the company. The company would pay corporation tax on the gain it's made on the sale of the assets. You then have a non-trading company with a load of cash in it that doesn't belong to the shareholder. The shareholder has to, or shareholders have to get their hands on that cash. So you would have to liquidate the company. So you've got to pay a liquidator. Um, and then that cash would be distributed to the shareholders. And it's at that point that they pay capital gains tax. They'd still often qualify for business asset disposal relief and annual exemptions, etc. But it's a, a much more drawn out process. Um, and also, um, because the company is paying corporation tax on the gain and the shareholders are paying capital gains tax on the cash that's distributed, you often end up paying more tax. On the flip side, the purchaser would usually or often want to buy the assets rather than the shares because when they buy the shares, they're getting the history of the company. Yeah. And if there's any skeletons in the closet or undisclosed liabilities, they are inheriting those. Now, the purchaser would normally protect themselves through the contract for purchase. And there'd be all sorts of warranties in there that would say, you know, if there are any undeclared or undisclosed liabilities, then the vendor would have to reimburse the purchaser for those. But if it's a few years down the line, the vendor's spent all of the money or has disappeared, it can sometimes be difficult to get hands on it. So that's off, That's why often purchasers want to buy 
the assets rather than the shares. So the purchaser wants to buy the assets. The vendor wants to sell the shares. Clearly, one of them has to compromise. So whichever party is compromising, they would usually adjust the price accordingly. So if the ven if the purchaser ends up buying the shares, they'd probably pay a bit less for them. Um, but really important that you talk to an accountant, look at the different the two different options. What are the what are the tax implications and, and agree in which route is the best one to go down? So we've talked a couple of times about what an accountant can do to help. So 360 can obviously help to come up with a valuation method, prepare a valuation, but what else can 360 help with in the process? Oh, well, it can help the business owner get the business ready for sale. Mm -hmm. um, Is there a good time scale to start looking at that? No. So <laughs> before, <laughs> the best time to think about your exit is before you start mm -hmm. because then every decision that you make in growing your business you can think is this getting me closer or further away to my exit strategy is it improving the value of the company or is it detracting from it so the best time to think about exit is before you start the second best time is today um, so we can help businesses come up with an exit strategy we can help them get from A to B quicker and more smoothly than they perhaps would without us. Um, we can value the company. We can help them find buyers. Um, we can look at the tax implications of selling. You know, what's the tax implication of selling the shares compared with the company selling the assets? Um, and we can help them um, with their financial systems, make sure that the financial information is accurate, up to date, real time, so that if somebody does ask for financial information, the owner is happy that there's not going to be any difficult questions asked about that financial information. I suppose as well, um, some people need an independent valuation. You know, they don't necessarily want their accountant to be preparing it for whatever reason. Um, so I suppose that's something we can also get involved in as well. Is it doesn't have to just be clients that are looking to exit. There may be non-clients but need that independence. Yeah, we our corporate finance department often values businesses that aren't clients of 360 because for whatever reason they need a, an independent valuation um, or just a second opinion. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's always sensible to shop around before you buy something isn't it it definitely is well thank you for listening to the purple surfer podcast if you've got any questions or anything you'd like to raise with us please contact us at help at 360accountants.co.uk or you can find us on all the socials facebook linkedin twitter slash x or instagram <laughs>